if Breatharianism is a thing, if there are people that do not need food or even water in certain cases to survive and thrive, why is it that some people, when they stop eating, they starve to death? Why is that? Why are there kids starving in Africa? Why is there such a basic, seemingly primal and intuitive fear within any animal, not just humans, uh, that they may go starving? Why do animals starve? Some animals in the wild starve to death. If they stop eating, they will die. So it isn't just humans. That's a very good question and you have to have an inquisitive mind. You have to question things, uh, especially if they seem alien to you, but question them with an open mind, with open-minded skepticism rather than closed-minded skepticism, okay? And I asked, you know, when I stumbled upon the idea of pranic living, breatharianism, living off the prana, subtler energies I question the same thing I question the same thing the the advantage that I had when I had come across this idea is that I have done so much so many so many psychedelics and every time I did a psychedelic I didn't want to eat I basically got in the breatharian state I didn't want to eat I would go walk forever without water or food I would run and, and, and be exposed under the sun for hours and I wouldn't feel thirsty, I wouldn't feel hungry because I was operating at a higher consciousness and so when I stumbled upon it, although I had all these questions like, okay, but some people starve but I, I knew it to be, I, I knew that this, like, obviously so, like, yeah, of course, it was like, of course I know what this feels like, I've experienced it tens of times you know, it's like, uh, you know, because you're operating at a higher level of consciousness, you're plugged into subtler forms of energy that are like infinitely more yielding in terms of energetic value. Okay? So then food to you seems like a lower form, secondhand form of energy because it is energy. Everything is energy. Food is energy. So let's go back now. Why is it that some people starve to death when, when they take, take on uh, breatharianism? When they, uh, or not, I mean, not even take on breatharianism. Uh, but if they stop eating uh, and some breatharians have tried to go breatharian and they ended up hurting themselves really bad because they didn't understand the concept they wanted an ego trophy look I'm a superhuman I don't eat I don't drink or let's say I don't eat you know and, and that's that's the ego trophy without understanding what it is okay so uh, first of all you have to look at genetics. Human beings and animals alike have been sustaining themselves energetically off of food, physical dense food, for thousands of years, okay? Thousands of years, many, many, many generations. And According to the science of epigenetics here, okay, I know I, I, I am using science here, very unusual, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll use some useful concepts from science as limited as the system of science is. Epigenetics states that what you do right now affects your genetics directly, so directly that if you are a smoker now and you smoke for, say, a decade, and you don't stop smoking and then you have a child your child just from one lifetime from 10 years of smoking you smoking is going to be more likely to grow up and smoke because your child will pick up the parasites will pick up the microbes from you from the child's mother and that will affect his cravings, her cravings, your child's cravings, your child's tendencies, just from one lifetime, okay? Just from like 10 years, your child is gonna be more likely to grow up and, and, and pick up cigarettes. So when he or she smells cigarettes, 
it's going to be different. They're, they're, they're going to be more drawn towards the cigarette than someone whose parents didn't smoke. Now imagine for thousands of years, you, your father and your mother, your mother's father and, and, and mother, your grandparents, all the grandparents have smoked cigarettes. It's almost certain that your child is gonna, at some point, pick up the habit. Because it's like so ingrained now. It's like generation after generation, generation after generation, generation after generation. So, if we have been eating as a humanity now for thousands of years since the descent of consciousness, the fall of consciousness, where we fell from the age of enlightenment, also known as Satya Yuga, into the age of darkness, Kali Yuga. Uh, so for thousands of years now, and different people have different dates as to when that began, and it wasn't like a drastic thing, like now it's darkness. It's sort of, you know, everything gradually happens. Uh, we began to depend in, uh, for a source of energy we began for nourishment and energy we began to depend on external dense physical material that we call now food substance and so generation after generation generation after generation generation after generation generation after generation, after generation well it, it almost seems that eating is innate to us now, with the fall of consciousness, human beings are the highest life form, as far as we know, on land. There may be some, some creatures dwelling within the inner earth that are already operating at a higher level. But on land, we know we're the highest evolved creature. The highest form of, 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 of high, the highest, high, highest evolved life form. On, on land at least okay so if we fall into this program of consuming all the other animals there they, they follow essentially animals just follow so they got in the cycle too. everybody get in the cycle of consumption and then the consumption program got written into the genetics of all life forms on the planet and then creatures began to consume one another and here we are you know, they say life eats life, it's nature. There's some truth to that in, in so as far as, as that's 3D consciousness, 2D and 3D, second density and third density consciousness, sure. Life eats life. Like a lot of people will say, well, eating meat's okay. You know, it's just life eats life. You know, we eat plants, you eat plants, you know, plants are life. Even vegans, even fruitarians, you're still eating plants, right? Life eats life. That's second density and third density consciousness. But what the people who say that don't get right is they don't realize that there is a process of evolution going on. And that now we're evolving into 4D and 5D where we, you know, eating will just become an absurd thing. You know, especially eating other life forms. You know, like you're eating other life forms. Like at 4D and 5D, it doesn't make sense. It just, you know, it doesn't make sense because you're, you're powered by light. It, it just doesn't make sense right it really doesn't like uh, if you if you want to experiment uh, this on yourself take a tab of acid and put a piece of uh, fruit in front of you i did that last time i put some bananas in front of me and i was looking at them like they i was looking at a at an object like i was looking at a shirt i was just seeing it as uh, something you you just try like just to get a taste of not something I would uh, be sustaining myself energetically because in that state of consciousness, I'm plugged into light, into my light body. So I'm looking and it's just like, I see it as just like an object, like anything else with, with life. It's not like there's, I see the it, whole, I, I can look at it and be like, wow, there is life in there. But I see it just as much as I see this tree. When I look at these trees, I don't think of them, I wanna eat them. I just look at them as beautiful life forms that have a high vibration. And I was looking at the banana and I was like, yeah, like I was just seeing it same as if I was looking at a tree. You know, it wasn't anything like, uh, I wasn't like, oh, that would be really, really good right now. Or, oh my God, what would I do without you? I can't survive. Uh, so, of course, at 4D, 5D, you're plugged into energy. Like, it's like, you know, once you, if you have solar panels on your car, wouldn't it be absurd to go to the gas station and put in fossil fuels? which you constantly need to pay for and they pollute the environment and they're expensive. 
it would be absurd. You have solar panels pl plugged on your car. Hey, you got free energy for the rest of your life. So much more yielding too. So much clean, cleaner. So at higher levels of consciousness, you get this. No words are necessary. No words are necessary. No explanation is necessary. Uh, so in the same way, now we, we have been eating for thousands of years. That's the program. That's the result. One of the results of the fall of consciousness is that life forms began to consume one another because they forgot who they are and they forgot that they're all connected to the light, which is the source of all, and that they're actually totally self-sustaining. And you will see as the planet, as Gaia makes her ascension to 4D, you will see even wild animals will begin to consume each other less and less. You will see it because they'll just be more at peace, more content. The vibration of the planet will be at a higher level where violence is no longer supported. Violent acts are no longer supported. And so uh, even animals who currently possess the most violent of urges, they'll just be more plugged into the light because animals are really dependent on us humans. If all of us humans are vibrating high, and we're uh, we're plugged to our source, then all the animals will get this will get into the same vibe too. It's it's when we began to get violent and consume one another and consume the planet that the animals followed. We see this in dogs. You know, if if, <laughs> if you uh, want to know uh, what the owner is like of the dog, uh, then spend some time with the dog, and that'll tell you everything about the owner because the dog should take on the personality of the owner. So the animal kingdom, yes, they consume one another, life eats life because they take on our personality, our human, our human tendencies. And as we begin to elevate our state of consciousness, they too will be elevated as a result. And they too will stop consuming. This consumption program is the epitome of 3D, third density uh, consciousness manifested in its shadow form. Plain and simple. And uh, it becomes less and less necessary the higher you vibe. As simple as that. You know when you're in love or you're focused on a project, a passion project of yours, that you forget to eat. Of course, because you're, you're vibrating higher. I see the more and more I'm into my mission, into serving others, which is what I do in these videos, the less and less I'm naturally eating, the less and less I have an appetite for food. Because now I'm vibrating higher because I'm, in, I'm into my higher calling, my higher mission. I was re-watching uh, an old podcast about Wim Hof and he, he was saying that he eats a small meal once a day because he just doesn't even f have an appetite for food because he's plugged into his mission and he does the breathing technique which fills him with prana. It's just natural byproduct, man. You vibrate higher and then, and then lower forms of energy because they are energy. It is energy. Everything is energy. Lower forms of energy, just, again, it's the same absurdity as someone who's got solar panels uh, on, installed on, on, on their car and there they are driving to the gas station every day putting in fossil fuels into the car. Now look, you're a hybrid car too. Some cars are hybrid right now. They can run off solar, they can run off fossil fuels. But if, if you have the solar panels installed, why on earth would you go and fill them with fossil fuels? It's just absurd, like logically it doesn't make sense. Same thing, same thing, we're hybrids. We're hybrids, we can eat, ingest fossil fuels, physical foods, uh, or we can uh, we can get the sun, like I'm getting it right now, via sun gazing and uh, sunbathing, and then many, many other subtler forms of energy. And then it just kind of starts to become more and more, like man, honestly, it's just becoming more absurd for me to eat nowadays. Like if you see what I'm eating these days, it's like, it's, it's kind of a joke actually. To me, I'm like, I can't believe it because it's like, it's natural too. I'm not trying. I'm not trying, it's just the more and more I'm plugged into energy, into higher forms of energy, subtler forms of energy, much more yielding and abundant and less, uh, less dirty. You know, you don't have to shit when you get the sunshine. You know, you don't have to fart. You know, you don't have to do that. Uh, and so it's the same thing. It, it, it's the same thing. It's like just become starting to become absurd. Much like having a hybrid car, but having the solar panels installed, yet going to the gas station and spending 50 bucks a day on gas when you got it for free for the rest of your life. You see, it just, you see the absurdity here? It just, that's, that's exactly the same. The microcosm 
uh, depicts the macrocosm. The microcosm in this situation is our cars, which are the microcosm of its micro macrocosm, which are our human bodies. We design our cars after our, our human bodies. And uh, so then it starts to become observed. You see? Um, so this is why kids starve to death, because kids come in, they're totally programmed. They're not yet adults with fully developed uh, mental faculties for them to evolve to the next level. So they're just gonna operate on instincts and programs, DNA programs, and the DNA program of humanity due to epigenetics is now human beings need food to survive. It's a belief system that got ingrained into our DNA as a result of thousands of years since the fall of consciousness of consuming. That's why kids in Africa die, and that's why most people, if they stop eating right now, they'll die. They have Because most people have not a single clue about prana. I'm looking around me here in the park. Many, many people laying around on the grass here. Uh, there is only one person who has their shoes off. That tells you a lot of, about how little people know about prana. Because if people know about prana, fully understood it, nobody would have their shoes on right now. Everybody would have them plugged into the ground so that they could release all the positive ions which cause a, a state of disharmony in the human body and they can pick up the negative ions so that they can, they can balance out their energy. But see, somebody who doesn't know something as basic as this, how do you expect them to stop eating and, uh, and not die? Because they're just operating on programs at this point. Not only is the program ingrained due to epigenetics for thousands of years, but also it's programmed from this lifetime also. From this lifetime also, it is programmed. So, um, you know, just the very fact that nobody has, you know, again, one person in what, 20 here, right, has their shoes off uh, because they don't realize how much, I mean, every, you know, because you're on your phone, you're getting, you're living in these electrical cages we call cities, uh, it drains your energy. And if you don't know something as basic as grounding to balance out your energy and your connection to the source, how do you expect to stop eating and uh, not die, not starve? When your full your belief system says, I need food, due to thousands of years of epigenetics, DNA programming, and due to programming based on this lifetime also. So yeah, most people, 98 to 99% of humanity, if they stop eating, they'll starve. And kids, most certainly. Children, they, they, they don't eat, they die as well. So uh, this is why, this is why. So you have to understand what living off prana is. You have to understand what breatharianism is before you even, you know, before you even uh, attempt, uh, attempt it at all. You have to really understand what it is. And then once you do, it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, then you get the sunshine, then you ground, you meditate, uh, you chant, you hum, you dance, you sing. You, you find your mission in life, serve others. They, they, God, service is so powerful. It's so powerful. That's the trip I'm on right now, the service trip. That's my game at the moment, is service. Because service is love, because you love your fellow beings, so you want to serve, and that alone sustains you energetically so powerfully. So powerfully. Like, I just have to say in my head, if I feel a little low on energy, I just have to close my eyes and just say the mission, the mission, the mission. And I just repeat it for maybe two minutes, no more. And I'm energized. Suddenly I'm like, yes, I wanna make more videos. Yes, I wanna start like a community. Yes, I wanna see all my people on YouTube. Yes, I wanna meet them, I wanna do retreats. And that just like plugs me. I'm like, yes, there's an ascension process. Just by closing my eyes for two minutes saying the mission, the mission, the mission, the mission. Because that's the power of love, service is love. So that's another powerful source of energy. And once you learn about these things, then naturally your appetite will decrease and you will begin to understand that if you have solar panels installed, even though your car is hybrid, there is absolutely no need whatsoever for you to go to the gas stations and waste your money and harm the environment along the way. Okay? Because that's what happens when you ingest fossil fuels, when you begin to have solar panels. You know, you realize you already have solar panels in your, uh, in your mind-body complex is you begin to look at food and be like, well, I'm gonna have to eat this. This is gonna take energy, I'm gonna have to sleep more. Oh, I'm gonna be farting, I'm gonna be shitting. This, this, and then you start to realize how absurd it is it begins to do it when you could just do it for free with zero waste 
requires less rest from your body, less sleep, you feel more energized, more mentally clear, no farting, no shitting. You know, it's like these things are just, it just like, you know what I mean? It just becomes, it becomes absurd, you know? So, uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's hopefully that clears up some of the, these things for you guys. And a lot of you guys have that question, right? Like you, you question it, you know, like I see it and I, and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are asking these questions. Like you should ask this question. How come people start? How come people die? So uh, hopefully you understand now why that happens. Uh, and again, my just simply, I'm looking around me here. There's maybe 20 people. Only one have their shoes off. If you don't have basic understanding of grounding, keep eating. Do yourself and do the whole world a favor and keep eating. Don't attempt. Don't don't be don't be a fool and attempt this. Keep eating if you don't have the basic knowledge. Uh, so that's about it and uh, thank you to all the patreons for your support uh, and um, if you would like to uh, support this mission that I'm on with something as little as two dollars a month uh, I'm loving this song you could do so in the description if you want to just make one-time donations if you feel like you have the urge to do so there's a link for PayPal donations in the description as well and I love you guys, Saeed Mobayed at Instagram. And until next time, may the force be with you.